Hi, it's Dwayne, Developer Advocate at Git Guardian. I'm here to talk to you about the workflow most developers will encounter when using Git Guardian to detect secrets. When we say secrets, what we really mean are hard-coded credentials like API keys, username password pairs, or certificates that end up in your source code. We think the earlier you find those secrets, the better. If you discover a secret before you make a commit, that's the easiest and best place to fix the issue before it gets shared. For this video, we're going to be specifically looking at GitHub, but this works across GitLab, Bitbucket, or Azure repos as well. As far as CI environments, we're going to use GitHub Actions, but this also works with Azure, GitLab, or Bitbucket pipelines, as well as CircleCI, DroneCI, Jenkins, or Travis. We'll be leveraging GG Shield, the free open source CLI for interacting with the GitGuardian platform. For the rest of this video, we'll be installing and authenticating GG Shield. Then we'll set up a pre-commit hook to automate our secret scans. Next, we'll create a PR and show Git Guardian checks in that workflow on GitHub. We'll also cover ways to bypass any of these checks. We understand that there are a lot of pressures to deliver your projects, and we never want to be a blocker. But be aware that bypassing Git Guardian checks leaves traces in your history. We'll then look at the alerting emails that are generated from Git Guardian, as well as what incidents look like on the dashboard. So let's get into it. Here we are in VS Code my editor of choice, but this all works in whatever editor and terminal setup you prefer. Here I'm in a repository that just builds a simple Python server. First thing we need to do is install ggshield. Now I'm going to use pip, the Python package manager installer, and we'll just say gg, yep, gg shield. Uh, but I'm on a Mac, so I could have used homebrew as well, and you can check out our full documentation for more options on installation, depending on your preferences. Now that ggshield is installed, the next step is to authenticate. We're going to do that with GG Shield auth login. This is the preferred path. Opening that will open a new browser window. And from here, I can authenticate. And now I see that I'm all good to go or all set, as it says here. Back in my terminal, if I just run GG Shield with no other commands around it, it will show me the help menu. And now I know I'm ready for action. Let me go ahead and clear my terminal. Now before I go any further, a proper workflow, I should check out a new branch. So I'm going to do a git checkout b, and I'm going to call this branch demo1. Now for this example, I'm going to go ahead and add a new Slack bot key in plain text. Of course, this isn't a valid key. It's just an example that follows the key structure. Never actually hard code secrets. If we wanted to manually check that the file or repo has a key present, we could run a command like GG Shield secret scan path or GG Shield secret scan repo, but I don't actually want to run it manually. I want it to run automatically in my workflow whenever I try to make a commit. So here I can leverage git hooks and the GG Shield install command. So running GG Shield install, and we'll run the help menu. So from here you can see I can install a pre commit or a pre push git hook, either locally or globally. Now I'm going to install a pre commit hook. There are workflows where you might want a pre-push hook as well, but most of the time we see that pre-commit gets the job done and it's what we overall recommend. It's actually the default type, so we don't need to declare that when we're installing. So to install it, we will simply do GG Shield install, but we still need to tell it if we want it to install globally or locally. So I'm gonna install this locally. And you can see it's written a new pre-commit hook that runs a check every time we try to make a commit. Now, if you already have a pre-commit hook set up, this will overwrite it, but you can simply add this line to an existing pre-commit file by using the dash A or append option. And if I run that, see, I'm simply adding it to the end of the file, but I don't need all of those in there. I will erase those, save, and close my pre-commit hook. Let's go ahead and clear my terminal. Well, we've saved the file with the secret, so let's go ahead and do a git add of that Python server. I'll do a git status just to show that it is in fact modified. And now I can do a git commit uh, minus M, and we will say this is a slack key added. And as expected, git guardian scanned the commit, and you see here it blocked that commit from happening because it found a slack bot token. As suggested in the remediation recommendation, what I really want to do is go ahead and replace that with some programmatic way to call it from another source. But for today's purposes, let's go ahead and bypass this check. And I can do that with the no verify option here. Now this is a 
git option that will go ahead and skip any normally triggered git hook workflow. And if I just add that no verify to the end, the commit is made without incident. Next, I'm going to go ahead and push this commit to my remote and start a pull request. Quick note before I do that, um, if the whole team is consistently using a pre-commit hook for the scan, it's going to be pretty apparent that a secret scan was skipped when a new secret shows up in the shared repo and then eventually in the Git Guardian dashboard. But for right now, let's go ahead and do a git push and MC Dwayne is the name of my remote and this was demo one. So we'll go ahead and push that. So over here on GitHub, I see that the branch has been pushed and it will just go ahead and let me start a pull request from here. So let's go ahead and just trigger that pull request. Now I actually have a couple of Git Guardian integrations already set up both a test that triggers upon a pull request and a GitHub action. Now we're not gonna get into setting these up in this video, but the full instructions can be found in our documentation. And immediately here I see that the checks have failed as expected. And ideally now I would go back, rotate the keys if necessary and replace the code with that programmatic way to get at them. But again, for the purpose of this video, let's go ahead and bypass these checks. First, let's deal with GitHub actions. Now to bypass any GitHub action, we simply need to modify the commit message and add in square brackets that contain skip CI or CI skip or no CI. This step is going to vary depending on your CI provider, but all provide some kind of mechanism for skipping a CI run. So back here in my terminal, since I don't have any other changes I want to make to this file, I'm going to do a git commit amend to simply modify the commit message. I'm going to add skip CI in the beginning. And if I save this message and then I do another git push, uh, this time I'm going to force it up there because all I changed was the message. And in my pull request view, I see that the action did not get called this time. But the evidence I bypassed these actions is forever in my commit history for all to see. The PR auto checks still failed though, and to deal with that, we're going to open up the details in a new tab or window, and we see that there's a mechanism built in to ignore these checks, which is what I'll do now. You can skip and mark it as false positive, or just skip the check. If we skip and mark it as false positive, it should tell the Git Guardian platform that you're marking this to be ignored moving ahead. Do use caution here, as your org has guardrails in place for a reason. For the purposes of this video, I'm simply going to skip the check for now and give it a few seconds to run. And we should say that it's skipped now. So if I close this tab, now back in the PR view, we can see that this has been skipped. The check was ignored and I can go ahead and merge the request as I see fit. Next, we're going to look at the email you'll see from pushing a secret and how that also looks in the dashboard. Here in my email, I see that, yes, I have multiple emails from GitGuardian, including this one that tells me, hey, a Slack bot token has been detected. It also tells me when I pushed it and gives me links to see it on GitHub. Since I also own my own GitGuardian account, uh, I can get a link to see it on GitGuardian as well. Let's go see this in GitGuardian. Here in the Guardian incident view, I see the incident, and by clicking into the incident, I see more information including more details and some remediation steps over here on the right. This is how the owner and managers of the Git Guardian instance will let you view incidents and then collect feedback from you if you are the developer involved. So click a couple options there and copy this link and open this link in a new incognito window show that I'm not logged in, but I can still access the appropriate view. From here, I can review the incident and give my feedback marking it if this was an actual secret, if this gives any access to sensitive information or services, uh, if it's been revoked, as well as being able to add any comments that I want. Then I'll sign it with my email and certify that all the information is correct and send that information off. In this case, I've also been given the option to ignore or resolve the incident. I'll go ahead and resolve this as uh, this is sensitive, but I choose not to revoke the incident and I will sign it with my email to confirm that, and now I have resolved the incident. Let's go take a look what this looks like back on the Git Guardian dashboard. Here it shows that the status is resolved, our feedback has been logged, and now we can move about our work. And since we resolved this incident, Git Guardian knows that future occurrences of this same secret can be safely ignored. Let's go back to our terminal. I'll go ahead and just add a simple comment to modify the file. We'll go ahead and do a git add of the same file do a git commit minus m 
I will say demo and get guardian lets this commit happen even though the pre-commit hook ran and tells us that no secrets have been found because we have marked that particular secret as resolved and no longer something we need to be on the lookout for. So wrapping up, we want you to be able to identify hard-coded secrets as early as possible, even before a commit is made. Using ggshield install, we'll create a git hook that automates the check process. Like all git hooks, you can bypass it with the no verify option if you do get blocked and need to push anyhow. If your organization has adopted Git Guardian through the PR and CI process, know that you can bypass those checks as well, but it does leave an audit trail. Finally, Git Guardian wants to keep you in the loop with regard to incidents. By giving you email notifications when you commit and push a secret, and by giving your SEC and ops teams a way to get feedback from you and possibly have you close the incidents in a safe way. We wish you the best in your development efforts. We want to help keep you safe out there.